Hello folks, this is still the 21st of June, 2020, and I'm on my way home. I had a great walk, and then I, um, I rented a canoe and I paddled myself around the, the lake a little bit. That was fun. I try to do that more often. It's a good upper body kind of thing. So where was I? I was talking about the demise of Harley Davidson. So in in last time's episode, I was talking about how my uh, needs changed, my criteria changed, and Harley no longer suited me. It's not really the fault of Harley, it's just that wasn't the kind of bike that they make. I wanted something that is uh, more like a sport bike but also can do touring and that's what this is. I wanted something quiet and that's what this has. Something cool, doesn't have any uh, problems with the heat burning your leg or coming up and roasting you. So that's, that's this bike. So uh, for me, the way I, you know, my criteria now, I don't really need to buy another bike uh, that I can think of right now unless they come up with something super duper awesome but and uh, if I buy a second bike right now my two big contenders are either the um, the Honda Fireblade or the uh, Africa Twin I really like that Africa Twin but you know I don't know if I'll ever do ADV riding I'm not sure maybe I don't even know where around here you can do that kind of riding. So I'd have to look into that. But that'll be a ways off yet. I'm going to pay off some debts with the mower and all that. Gee whiz. Sell some pints of blood or something. Jeez. Now Harley Davidson, uh, as everybody knows, has been suffering from a sales slump. And that's in part because... Uh, fewer people in general are riding motorcycles and the the crowd that Harley really made its bread and butter off of is retiring or dying and there aren't as many people replacing them people like me I replaced at least a couple of old guys in my time and uh, you know, I got out of Harley, so, oh well. Plus, there's a whole bunch of used bikes on the market, so they're not making any money off of that. The, not the motor company, anyway. And, uh... I'll just get to the, to, the, to the meat of the issue here. One of the main problems I see is that when you buy a Harley, you shouldn't feel any need or desire to do a stage one upgrade, stage two upgrade, stage four upgrade. The bike should come as it comes, you know, it should come with the good stuff already. It shouldn't have to be another four thousand, five thousand dollars to make this bike come up to its full potential. Well, shouldn't it have come to its full potential from the factory? And then, of course, the, the say, they'll say, well, it's because the government this and the government that. Well, wait a minute. I thought there was a big lawsuit because Harley was allowing people to do stuff that was not a, not with the EPA or whatever. So they changed their ways. But you can still do a stage four upgrade and it's government compliant. And if you get a 114, I had a 114 because of the upgrade, then like the next year they come up with a 114 stock. And you upgrade to a 117, next thing you know they come up with a 117 from the factory. So why don't they just make the bike at the biggest capacity that they have. It takes more years. No, it doesn't. They come up with those stage upgrades the same time they come up with the bike. Or like six months later. So why not just make the bike have the engine that it needs or that it can have? The full potential. Why are they making you spend all this money? Because it's a dealer kickback. They're making more money off you. You're paying um, you know, 28000 30000 for the bike. Another four or five thousand on, on the stage upgrades and the exhaust upgrades. 
not to mention all the customizing you got to do. Change the seat, change the handlebars, highway pegs, new lights. I mean, you do all these things to it, you're spending mega thousands of dollars. At least the engine could come already in tip-top form. But no, no, they don't do that. No, like the Honda, right? I was noticing on the Honda Goldwing forum, I've never once seen anybody talk about any engine upgrades, any power upgrades. Not a one. And I mentioned it in the, in the forum, and it was like, well, it's because the bike's already awesome. I mean, how fast do you really want to go beyond lightning? I mean, damn. The only gripe that I have about it is it's got that governor on it, so you get up to, I think it was 112, and, and you can't get any more oomph out of it. And the earlier generation, I think you can go up to 135 or 140. And not that, and I said that to the dealership guy, I'm like, can I get a chip modification or flash or whatever and make it so I could do that? And he's like, well, why would you really want to? Do you really want to go 140? I'm like, mm, kinda. Oh, in certain condition. Oh well. I'm not messing with my warranty, that's for damn sure. So I think Harley shooting themselves in the foot in that regard. Plus, uh, well, and here's why. Honda has a bike that you can use for touring very well. This bike is perfectly fine for touring, especially single-up single touring, or two people in their 100 and 160 to 180 pound range. Uh, two people can tour on this bike, not too bad. They can fit their stuff okay. I've, I've seen a lot of comments from people, oh, I can fit my stuff, no problem. Okay, fine. The older generation Goldwingers, oh, it's too small. Point is, this bike can do it. And it can act like a sport bike. It's got all the creature comforts, and it goes like a bat out of hell. You can really get through some twisties, awesome. So the question becomes, why isn't Harley offering something like that? Well, because they've been roped into this. It's got to be a V-twin, air-cooled, and they was too busy holding on to the clutch. So, um, and then Harley tries to come out with, you know, liquid cooling, like the Nova, or the, um, the V-Rod engine, right? It was like, eh, it's not really a Harley. It's made, the Porsche made that engine, man. So they poo-pooed it. So any attempt that they've had to, to, to make it so that the bike breathes better or isn't as hot, liquid-cooled heads and stuff, people are always uh, griping, oh, I don't, I'm not going to trust that. I don't, I don't want a hydraulic clutch. I want a cable clutch, and I don't want liquid-cooled anything. I don't trust it. So the, the market, if, if Harley listens to the traditional market, they're doomed. Because if they keep making these air-cooled bikes that are trying to keep up with bikes like this, they're, they're, just, they're doomed. The bike's going to be too hot, too loud. Well, too loud for a lot of people. And that's why they're losing out. And they might have the biggest market share still. I don't know if they do, but they've been losing it, losing it, and losing it. So it's one of those cases of adapt or die. And so Harley really needs to get on the ball with that. Now they did make the uh, the Pan America ADV. And I've seen a lot of mixed reviews about that. A lot of Harley riders think it's ugly. Think it's uh, blasphemy to have a bike like that. And then the, um, the Bronx, the Street Fighter bike, which piqued my interest when it came out. I want to give that one a test ride. People are, oh, that's blasphemy. You can't have a, a sport-looking bike from Harley. Well, like I said, if you want to appeal to the to the kids, what are kids getting it? When I say kids, I'm talking about you know teens and twenties. They're getting used Suzukis, used Yamahas, used uh, Hondas, and they're not getting cruiser-type bikes. A lot of them are getting sport-type bikes. So that's the uh, the entry level bike for a lot of people. You want to hook them, right? You hook them on something. You got to hook them on something. If everybody's buying the sport type bikes and you want to hook them, you can't sh show them a sportster and go, here you go, here's a sportster. And by the way, when you own one, everyone's going to make fun of you. 
they're going to say it's too small. They're going to post a meme on your page of a little chihuahua being scared by big bull, big pit bull terriers behind it. So this is how you feel when you're followed by regular bikes when you're on a Sportster. Yeah, that's an incentive to buy one, sure. If you want the young kids to get into the into the motorcycles, you got to sell them what they like, and they like sport type bikes, and they want those features. They want the ride modes, and they want the the this, that, the other, all the creature comforts. Now, if you're one of those, if you're 45 or older. And you're saying, but I don't like those things. I don't want to have that electronic crap on my bike. I want a liquid cooled. I want it to look like it dropped out of the sky from 1958. Well, you're the reason Harley's failing. You are. It's just that simple. Because you're 45 plus. You're going to get old. You're going to die. And then who's going to take the bikes after you? The young kids aren't interested in that kind of thing. They've grown up on technology. They've grown up on smartphones and apps and being able to do everything digitally. And sure, you're going to have a, a sizable number of people who like the old school stuff. They want to kickstart their bikes and all that. The hipster types with the, the beard and the glasses and the tattoos. You're going to get those, sure. But the vast majority of middle America, nah. They're riding sport bikes right now. So if Harley made a sport bike, or a few, made them affordable, that's another big thing, then you start hooking those kids. And then when they get old and they go, you know what, leaning over like that doesn't really do my back any favors. I want to get something where I'm sitting up. Then you start getting them into the other stuff. Harley cannot force the market to come to them. They have to go to the market. And the market is, if you're 45 and up, you're not really the main market, or you might be now, you're the only market they have. But if they want to go past another 20 years, they're going to need the younger people. So, make bikes younger people want, and make bikes that are affordable for the younger people. You still make the stuff, you know, like the, the road glides, the street glides, the, you know, the, the big Harleys, the, the ones that the old fogies like. But also make the stuff that the young people like, the technology people like. That way you transition, they kind of overlap. That's just my opinion. And you're going to tell me, I don't like this new technology. I don't like TPMS and I don't trust automatic transmissions. And you're a pussy if you, if you ride one of those like that. And if you're not out there with no shocks at all and a hardtail bike having your kidneys rattled you're you're not a biker you're a pussy yeah well if you believe that you're you're one of the minority in the in the market and when you die so does Harley so that's my opinion anyway change it's inevitable change what a gorgeous day all right this is my Kaylee 7 stay safe out there and I'll talk to you later.